Okay, let's review. So far, we've learned how NASA engineers use geometry and algebra, flow visualization, and glowing paints to help them create more aerodynamic vehicles, and how shape and surface area affect drag. We've also learned how computer technology can help you solve problems that are out of this world. Now, let's learn how NASA engineers are using geometry to create a concept airplane that looks a lot like a flying wing. Describe the differences between the blended wing body and today's commercial airplanes. How do NASA engineers use geometry to estimate frontal surface area? What design features would increase the drag on the low-speed vehicle? How could engineers compensate for that drag? The blended wing body, or BWB as we call it for short, is an advanced concept passenger airplane. That means that we're still in the process of deciding and testing what will be the best design. So far, early studies estimate the blended wing body will hold up to 500 passengers, have a wingspan of 247 feet, a length of 160 feet, and be more than 40 feet or four stories high. It kind of resembles a flying wing. Engineers believe the BWB has potential to perform better than traditional tube with wings airplane, like the Boeing 747. Some estimates predict that this new airplane will reduce operating costs and the amount of fuel the airplane uses. This means your airline tickets may cost less. So Wendy, what makes the blended wing body so special? It's shape. Since we've been discussing shape and geometry in today's program, let me show you what makes the BWB different from other airplanes today. If you look down on the top of the plane, you can see that its fuselage, that's the part that people ride in, and the wing are blended together. That's how it got its name, the blended wing body. Now, from the front of the BWB, or the frontal view, we can see that there is a smooth transition from the fuselage to the wings. This shape allows more people to sit in the fuselage and even out into the wings. Remember the picture of the streamlined car Luther showed you? Just like a car, when an airplane has a smooth shape, it can help reduce drag. Do you see anything else that makes the BWB different from other airplanes? Hmm. You know, it doesn't have a tail like other airplanes. Right. Just like blending the wing and fuselage together helps to reduce drag, taking off both the horizontal and vertical tails also helps reduce drag. Drag, which you learned about earlier, resists thrust. Thrust, the force that propels the airplane, is usually provided by jet engines. If an airplane has too much drag, it will need more thrust or engine power. However, when the airplane is designed for less drag, like the BWB, less thrust is needed. So, what does this all mean? Less thrust means less fuel is needed. And less fuel means uh, less money to buy a ticket. You got it. Now, Wendy, you know, you said earlier that the BWB is just a concept airplane, so I guess that means it hasn't been built yet. Right, it would be too expensive to build the full-size BWB. NASA and Boeing engineers come together and design some scale models. That way, they can test it before they build the full-size blended wing body. Now, you said some scale models. Does that mean there's going to be more than one model of the BWB? Absolutely. If we only built one model, we couldn't collect enough information. So we've built a model that's approximately 1% the size of the BWB. Hey, let's do the math. What would a 1% model of the BWB look like? Would it fit in your classroom or in a shoebox? I know. Let's figure it out. Wendy told us earlier that the BWB will be 247 feet wide, 160 feet long, and 40 feet tall. Using mental math, let's take 1% of each of those measurements. Okay. 1% of 247 is 2.47, or about 2.5 feet wide. 1% of 160 is 1 1.6, or about 1.5 feet long. 1% of 40 is 0.4, or about a half foot tall. So, yeah, a 1% model of the BWB should definitely fit in your classroom. Right, Wendy? That's right, and here it is. As I said earlier, building just one scale model like this didn't give us all the information we needed. So we built a 2%, 3%, and a 4% model. They'll all be tested here at NASA Langley in the wind tunnels to determine performance and stability. While wind tunnel tests can help us predict how the BWB will perform, it can't tell us how a real pilot will be able to control it in the air. So NASA Langley is building another subscale model called the low-speed vehicle, 
or LSV, and it will actually fly. We will take our LSV wind tunnel predictions and compare them to actual flight test data. The flight test will take place at NASA Dryden Flight Research Center in California. Engineers want to learn how to control and stabilize this new concept airplane so it will fly safely. In a wind tunnel, you just can't simulate that. The LSV is about 14% the size of a full-size BWB. 14% model of the BWB is about 35 feet wide, 22 feet long, and 6 feet high. Remember in the classroom activity when you determined that a greater frontal surface area produced greater drag? Let's look at the frontal view of the 14% BWB model. To estimate the frontal surface area, all we need is the width, the height, and a little geometry. First, we take the frontal view and divide it into parts using geometric shapes like this. Then, we estimate the area of each geometric shape and add them together to get the total frontal surface area. Next, we combine the total frontal surface area with all the flight test data we've collected and calculate the drag force for this particular model. We know that to fly, we need a certain amount of thrust to overcome the drag force. Okay, so figuring out the frontal surface area of the 14% model helps you calculate drag, which then determines how much thrust is needed. Right. But this is just a concept airplane, right? I mean, what if you wanted to add something, maybe like an observation deck on top? An observation deck would definitely increase the frontal surface area van, which would then increase drag. In order to overcome that amount of drag, we need to increase thrust by adding more powerful engines. You know what? That applies to the go-kart race I had with Van. My frontal surface area was greater than his because I didn't crouch down into an aerodynamic shape. This greater frontal surface area created more drag and I lost. However, if I had more thrust, I could have easily overcome the drag and left Van in the dust. Well, you know what? That's all we have time for today. Yep. <laughs> now, we hope you've all made the connection between the aeronautical research conducted here at NASA and the math, science, and technology that you do in your classroom every day. Jennifer and I would love to hear from you with your questions, comments, or suggestions. So write us at NASA Connect, NASA Langley Research Center, Mail Stop 400, Hampton, Virginia, 23681 or send us an email at connect at edu.larc.nasa.gov.